going everybody hope you're having a wonderful day nice and sunshiny here but yeah it's still like 39 degrees it's supposed to be nice all week but you know what that means rain all weekend right yep they've got it coming rain all weekend we're talking about a lot of rain too and really cold temps to go along with it watching the birds hey birds cardinals whatever you want to call them but today's video is another how-to video with DaVinci Resolve. It's basically how to animate anything. So let's get in there and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. I've got DaVinci Resolve open. In this case, it's DaVinci Resolve 14. But everything I'm going to show you today will work with 14, 15, 13, and so on and so forth. So what I've already got it open, as you can see. And I'm going to assume that you know how to bring in your media that you want to work with but in this case I'm going to show you for the new people one way is to go up to the top left where it says file click on that scroll down to where it says import media and it will open up everywhere you have media like videos pictures and all that stuff okay and you just click on your pictures folder and then you just go in and decide which one you want okay click it and highlight it and then go down where it says open and click on that it automatically imports it into your media pool okay and I'm going to show you another way. Remove selected clips. Get rid of it. On most Microsoft computers or Microsoft programs, you have your test bar down at the bottom. And I know Apple's the same way. You have your test bar. Most people have an icon on the test bar for their photos. Just click on that. And it opens up all your photos. Like I said, this will work on photos, it'll work on video, it'll work on anything, okay? What I'm fixing to show you. But let's just say that, I'm trying to find a good picture to show, to use. I really haven't given much thought to which picture I want to use, but let's, hold on, let me find one, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find one that I really like or that will work good for this demonstration purpose. Let's just use this ZL1, okay? Left click it and hold it, and drag it. And you see the DaVinci icon right here on the bottom. Make sure your pointer, your cursor, is going over that icon and it automatically brings that up. Now you can either drag it and drop it up there and it'll copy it to your media pool, or you can drag it and drop it in line, which is what I'm gonna do, and it automatically copies it to your media pool. See how simple that is? Okay. Now, depending on how you exited this program last time, you'll either have one window or two windows. Let me show you the difference. This is the Inspector tab, and as you can see, it says nothing to inspect. If you click on Inspector, it brings up both windows. Now, what this first window is, is just a media um, tab, if you will. If you go over and hover over anything you have, like a video or whatever, you can see the little line moving. At least I hope you can with the cursor. And if that was a video, it would so show the, the, the timeline in the video wherever you're hovering with your cursor. But if you have this, go up and click on Inspector. And that'll open that up. And again, it says nothing to inspect. And we're fixing to change that. And the way you change that is by clicking on the photo. Now it opens up everything. It opens up your composite mode, which is a blend mode, you know however you want to add it to another photo, video, stuff like that. Opacity, which makes the actual picture see-through. The, the further down you drag it, the more the picture see-through. Like if you wanted to put a video clip behind it or another photo behind it, whatever. Then you have zoom, position, rotation angle, anchor point, pitch, y'all, flip, everything. And then some more stuff down below like cropping and stuff, which we're not going to use today. I'm going to show you how to do a zoom, okay? This is, like I said, this video is for animation purposes. You can zoom left, you, I mean, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can scroll left, scroll right, flip it, rotate it, anything you want to do. And let me show you. Right, zoom. Just a quick zoom, right? You click in, you, you take your cursor and put it in the box and just drag it left or right to make a zoom, whichever way you want it to go. Okay? Position. Pretty much says it all. You click in that and drag it. Left, right, up and down. Okay? Rotation is exactly that. It rotates the picture. Let me get this up here so you can see it. P. 
pitch basically just tilts the picture okay up and down and y'all tilts it left and right like imagine if you're flying in a plane and you hit the rudder on the uh, you know the stick it's gonna make it go left to right now just assume that we don't want none of this the way to go back to the zero setting if you look all the way over to the right you have your numbers you have some dots and you have some circles with pointers on them click on the pointer or the circle with the pointer on it and that resets everything back to zero okay now for this video I'm going to show you two things the first one is how to zoom now you like I said you can zoom in or you can zoom out I'm going to show you how to zoom in to zoom out is the exact opposite to zoom out all you have to do is start with a picture zoomed in to what you want to show let's assume for one second that you want to whatever reason start with the headlight right and then when you're done you want it to be the whole picture okay like that let me hit reset all you have to do is do the exact opposite of what I'm fixing to show you it's all about starting point now if you look right here you can see the timeline marker and uh, you can click anywhere in your timeline and it will move that timeline marker well you don't want to start at the end because that's going to be the end of the zoom effect you want to start at the beginning so you can click there at the very beginning if you're unsure if that's the beginning if you look down on your keyboard you have to, to the right side beside the numbers if you have a normal keyboard you have up that arrow down arrow right arrow left arrow the two arrows we're going to worry about right now is the up and down if you hit up it takes it all the way back to the very beginning of the clip if you hit down it takes it to the very end well we know we want to start at the very beginning now that we are set at the beginning we need to bring up all of our tools again so click on the photo and that brings it up I'm going to zoom in just a little bit that way the picture fills the frame to start with there's no box on the sides and that's where we're going to start that is our starting point if you look I mean you can do this from the middle on in other words you can have the, the car like that halfway through it and then halfway start this you can do it anywhere in a photo or video clip does not matter all that matters is where you put your starting point the way you put your starting point is is get the curse the timeline where you want it and since we're going to be doing dealing with zoom and also position that's the only two things we're going to mess with over here the reason we're going to use position is because I'm going to use the bow tie to zoom into and if you notice that's not in the center of the photo if it was in the center I could just use zoom so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to zoom the picture in and pull the picture over to the side the right the way you do that is you have to set your starting point like I mentioned a second ago so now you're gonna go over the little dots beside each one of those zoom and position you're gonna click those two dots and what that's going to do is it's going to set the timeline as your starting point where you have that marker understand as you can see it's now highlighted it's now red if it's not red then it's not going to work so you need for it to be red now since I know that I'm going to take the zoom effect from this picture all the way to the very end all I got to do is hit the down arrow and that the down arrow and that moves my timeline all the way over to the right now I go back up and I hit the two dots again because this is going to be the final position marker just consider it a marker for the rest of the video when I say marker this is what I'm talking about with the dots okay you're setting your marker well this isn't where I want to finish because this hasn't done anything so now we're going to click in the box and drag left or right and you'll see it move I'm going to start off with left it should get smaller but you're going to, if you put your cursor up in there you'll see you'll have two pointers one going left one going right just click it and hold it and that will disappear and then all you do is drag like I thought dragging it to the left makes it smaller dragging it to the right makes it bigger now like I said I want to start with a full picture and I want to end on the flow tie which is that right there I want that to be in the middle of my picture as large as I can get it 
And like I said, you can do anything you want. This is just me for my video purposes. Uh, now I gotta move it up. And the way you move it up is going over to the y-axis in position. Drag it down, it moves it down, drag it, I mean drag it left, it moves it down, drag it right, it moves it up. Zoom it some more. Right? Move it over to the left again. I mean right again. This should be pr pretty close to what I want when I get this one done. Just keep dragging it to the right. And now we're going to drag it to the right to move it up to Y position. And get it just like you want it. Okay? Now, that's done. If that is what I wanted to start with the full picture and zoom in to that section of the picture, it's done. Because we set the marker for the full picture, we set the marker for the zoom effect. Now all we have to do is go back and click the very beginning of our timeline. And you can look and see that the marker is still set. Now all you have to do is hit play. There's two ways to do play. If you have your picture highlighted, hit space bar. Or you can hit the right arrow. This, uh, for this video, I'm, I'm going to hit the space bar. And there you go. Now if you want it faster than that, Click on the side of the picture and drag it into the right. And guess what? It doesn't change the marker. The marker's still there. So let's go back. See? Full picture. Zoop. And we go. If that's too fast for you, just drag it the other way. And the marker will never change. As long as you don't change it up on the right, your zoom and your Rotation, I mean your zoom and your position, it'll stay the same on that one clip. Okay, I'm back at the beginning, hit space, and watch it zoom in. Now the reason that it zoomed in is because my marker is at the middle of the clip because I made it so long. So to change that, you would have to go in and erase that marker and move the marker over, if that makes sense to you. But let's just do it in the, the easy way to find out where the end of that marker is is to put the timeline marker over and just glad, drag your photo, okay? Just drag it and wherever it starts, stops moving will be the end. Right there it stopped. And if you're unsure, just Pull it over to the right. Now you can hit your left arrow. Highlight that. Make sure it's highlighted. And watch up here and you'll see when the markers get red again. Just hit to the left. Until it gets there. Whoop, went one too far. See? The markers are still there. So I can have it zoom and stop and then show for the rest. Or I can have it zoom and just stop. And like I said, to do it the other way, you just do the exact opposite of that. Okay, in this section, I decided I want to use a slide. In other words, I want to zoom in and show just this section of the car and have it slide across as if that's how I recorded a video. Now, of course, this ain't a video, but we can somewhat make it look like a video by zooming in to just that. So we set our markers again. Right? And we zoom in until we get what we want in the, in the clip. Now because it's a photo, you're going to have a black bar. But let's, let's just say for sake of video that that's what we want right there. Okay? So we go back to the beginning, right? We set the markers over to the right. We slide, we scroll, uh, zoom in, and use our position to get it to where we want. Okay? We want to start about, about the middle of the flow tie. And it's just a hair low, so we raise it up. And now our timeline marker is set. And our position markers are set. Now what we're going to do 
is leave it just like that and do the same thing we did in the zoom jump all the way to the end but this time what we're going to do is we're not going to mess with the zoom anymore because it's already set it's going to stay just like that all we want to do is change the position so now we click to the right end of our timeline to get the cursor the marker over there dang marker 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 and now we click the red dot okay for position click the red click the dot and make it red now all we're going to do is change the position of where we want it by dragging the X position okay now since we started with half of it on that side we're going to end with half of it on the other side to make it look like we walked across the front of the car while doing a video and there it is it's finished it's set to check it click on the timeline at the very beginning you can see the markers are still there the picture is just like you left it and hit the space bar pretty simple huh now for this one I'm gonna do something a little, uh, I'm gonna throw in a little extra animation we're gonna have this like an intro for a video we're gonna have it spin and zoom at the same time sound complicated it's not again make sure that you have your timeline marker at the very beginning now what you got to do is you got to decide which way you want it to spin as it comes in okay by taking it all the way to the right as it zooms it should spin to the right if you take it all the way to the left as it zooms in it should spin to the left as it comes in I want it to spin to the right so we're going to do that and then we'll take our zoom all the way out and we'll start with nothing now go up and tell the computer program that that's where you want to start you're going to click the, the zoom and you're going to click the rotation and highlight both of those okay now you go you move your timeline marker to the end and go back up click zoom highlight it and click rotation and highlight it now you zoom it in to whatever size you want and in this case I want it to be full screen okay and then you go down and rotate it all the way back to the other side or until it's straight whichever one you want I'm gonna go straight this time which will be right in the middle right there oh, it's still just a hair crooked right there that's what I want to end up with so now I have my timeline marker set let's go back to the very beginning and hit start The reason it's draggy is because it uses a lot of disk space and 3D graphics and everything to spin it, but it won't do that in your finished product. But that's pretty cool, huh? Let's watch it again. And that's what you're going to end up with. Now, if you want to put your channel name in here, whether it's about Fords or whatever, if you're using a Mustang, whatever your channel name is, you can now put it in. I'm going to put mine, which is Camaro time. So I'm going to come over here and grab a text box and I'm going to drag it over the top of the video. I don't want it to show up until right at the end. So I'm going to make the box smaller. Okay, right about there. Click on that and it opens up the box. That's when it's going to start showing up, and I'm going to show you a little trick about that in a second. But all I got to do is type in my name, Camaro Time. I'm going to change the font, font family, and for this one, I'm just going to use Algerian. I just, I just seem to like that Algerian, and you can see how it makes it look. That's good enough for the size. Now let's see where it's going to end up. I want it a little higher than that, so all I got to do is click in the box. Go up and click the name, and then I can drag it. Or if I want to be more specific, I can go up and where it says video, click that. And I can get, click on my position, and I can move it wherever I want. If I want it to the left, right, whatever. But for this instance, I want it right about there. 
and I'm going to put a drop shadow on it. Go back to text and put a slight drop shadow on it so it sticks out, stands out more. Now, because it's going to start right there in that position, I don't want that. So I'm going to grab this little pointer, this little white dot in the top left, and I'm going to pull that over. And what that does, it gives it a shadow. I'm going to drag it all the way to the end. Now you see it's gone. So let's drag it all the way to the back. Hit play again. And it comes. Hits the text. It starts putting it in. And see it starts adding it while the picture is filling up the screen. And that's all there is to it. That's simple to animate. Anything. Now if you want to see something else. Here let me show you a little something else. Let's um, assume for some reason you want to have a pitch to it. In other words you want it to be like this for dramatic effect all you got to do is click in the pit you can grab that dot and slide it whichever way you want it you can make it come down you can make it go up whichever way or like anything else you can st start in the box click inside the box and drag your mouse whichever way you want to go with it let's start all the way down like that we're at the beginning with the timeline we've got it where we want to start now we click the little dot beside pitch because that's what we just did was pitched it that's our starting mark when we get done we want it to be full screen so we're going to go right there click that we're going to drag click the dot again and drag it back to the left to where it is zero if you know that zero is where you want it just click in the box and it'll highlight the box and type in zero and hit enter and that's automatically square well, here we go. Click back at the very beginning and hit start. Like I said, it just depends on what you want to do. There's so many different things you can do with it. It's just absolutely crazy. The only thing that you can't do is actually flip the picture like that during the process. For whatever reason, if you look over here, there's no dot that you can click on it to make it do that there are other ways to do it I'm not going to show you that right now you just have to figure out how you want to start what you want to do with the picture how you want to finish and then just go to it and just in case you you're having a hard time figuring out how I do the opposite zoom like start in and zoom out well, let me show you just in case it's for some reason it's kind of hard for you to understand to do the opposite way, in other words, be zoomed in and have it zoom out, put your marker, your timeline marker at the beginning, use your zoom and your position to get it exactly where you want. Let's use Z01 this time. Just use your up and down and everything for that. Let's just say we're going to start there, okay? Got it. We're going to click our two markers over here, and that tells it that's where we want to start. We're going to go to the end, click there, go back and click the two markers, and then put it exactly where we want it. Like we know that we want this one to be zoomed out for the whole car. I'm just going to zoom it out like this to start with so you can get an idea of what I'm doing. Okay. As you can tell, it's too small for the frame, so I need to get it centered in the box and then zoom in just a little bit to make it go fill the frame. And that's it. That's the end of the, the transition. That's the end of the animation. We now have our end marker set, so all we got to do is go back to the beginning. And you can see our end beginning markers are still there. And hit play. And the program will take care of the rest. Pretty cool, isn't it? This program is so very powerful. People don't understand when I tell them this is a very powerful program, how powerful it really is. It is unreal at the stuff you can do to it or do with it. But hey, this is just a few basic ways to, to, to do animations. Victor Sane of Sane Auto, I was on his live stream last night. And he had a few questions and stuff and was asked, saying that he needed to learn how to do this better. And I figured I'd get on here and make a video. This is for him. 
Now with that said, it's for anybody. Anybody's welcome to use it. These tips and tricks that I do on DaVinci Resolve is for anyone. I don't care. Male, female, young, old, large, small, tall, short. I don't care. You're more than welcome to use them. I appreciate you taking the time to use them and listen to my ranting as far as that goes. Now let's get back and I'll close this out. And there you go. It is really that simple. Yeah, I know. I still got to do the, the uh, video about that. It's coming, I promise. I got a lot going on. A lot of videos to make. I actually have a long list of videos to make. Just no time. But that's all there is to it. When I first started, there wasn't a lot of videos out there with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, the one that I had, I started with 13. There wasn't a lot about the particular stuff that I wanted to do, so I used what was there, and I took a bit of this, and I took a bit of that, and I added them together, and then I added my own touch to it. That's what makes it so great. No matter what you do, your video or your photo is not being touched. It's not being disturbed. It's not being destroyed. It's still in your hard drive. Wherever your pictures and your video is, it's still there. Nothing will change it. Nothing. Because when you save the... Um, 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 when you save the program, save the file, you're saving it to another section. You're not copywriting or over... Copying over or overwriting. God, I can't talk now all of a sudden. You're not overwriting the original video. So if you do something you don't like it, just delete it and do it again. It's that simple. It really is that simple. And I do these videos to try to help. Like I said, Victor from St. Otto, I was on his live stream the other night, and he said that he was having a little bit of um, difficulty with, animation trying to learn it and everything so I figured I'd do this to show a few quick tips how to do it and to show that you're only limited by what your mind can come up with the program will do it you just have to figure out what you want to do with it up here the crazier you are up here the crazier it'll be on land <laughs> and everybody knows I'm crazy that's why some of my videos are out there but with all that said I'd like to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and looking at these videos. If by all means, if there's anything you'd like to see, you need help with, drop a comment down in the comment box and I'll do my very best to answer it. If I don't know, I'll try to find it. I swear I will. And I will reply to you. So drop, drop, drop a comment. Anything you want to see on the channel. Anything you see I'm doing wrong, could do better, yada, yada, yada. You know the routine. And by all means, hit that like. And please, think about subscribing really means a lot to me. I enjoy talking to each and every one of you. But until next time, guys, you be safe. Get out there and have fun and enjoy your car. Take care.